Welcome back to Hard Run Box. Today, it's time to take a look at ray tracing on NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs, a feature they opened up to all last week through the release of driver version 425.31. Prior to this, you needed an NVIDIA Turing RTX graphics card to get all the visual benefits of ray tracing. But for a variety of reasons I'll get to later, you can now access ray tracing in today's games on Pascal GPUs from the GTX 1060 6GB and up, along with new Turing GTX GPUs like the GTX 1660 Ti. I'll be honest here, I've been a little sick in the past week, so I haven't been able to do as much testing on this topic as I'd normally like, but I have managed to take the most powerful Pascal GPU I have, the NVIDIA Titan X, and pit it against NVIDIA's RTX lineup in all three of the games available today that support ray tracing. Now, we all know ray tracing on Pascal GPUs is going to suck. This isn't some big surprise, it's just a simple fact of having a GPU that doesn't have any specific acceleration built in for a very performance intensive graphical effect. But there are some interesting questions about ray tracing on Pascal that I did want to answer. The first is to what degree does Pascal suck? Is a card like the Titan X faster than the slowest RTX GPU, the RTX 2060? Nvidia has given out a few benchmarks that give us some indication, but of course we want to verify this with our own data, and in particular look at not just average frame rates, but 1% lows and general performance swings within a gaming session. The other question is whether you can still get some form of acceptable performance from a Pascal card while ray tracing, despite knowing full well the performance in general is not going to be great. For example, can this card run a game at above 30 FPS at 1080p with acceptable ray tracing quality? This would allow some gamers to genuinely try out ray tracing without being forced to view a slideshow. So let's get into the data, and as always I've used my Core i9-9900K test rig for these benchmarks with 16GB of DDR4 memory, not that these titles are CPU or memory bottlenecked while ray tracing. All of the data you see here is from the latest versions of the games with the latest drivers installed. I know that games like Battlefield 5 are continuing to optimize their ray tracing performance, so it's crucial with these sorts of tests to use up-to-date benchmark data. You'll see the areas we've tested in each game as we get to them. Let's kick things off here with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the latest game to include ray tracing through the form of shadows. When I tested this game previously, I found that only one of the three ray tracing modes makes any sense to use, and that's the Ultra mode. The high mode produces worse visual quality than disabling ray tracing in my opinion, while medium has a very limited scope for ray trace shadows. So for the testing here, I've used the Ultra mode. We'll start here with the 1080p data, and as expected, the Titan X is falling between the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080 when ray tracing is disabled and all other settings are set to their maximum level. However, when enabling ultra ray tracing, the Titan X immediately drops to a level of performance below the RTX 2060. In fact, it's 10% slower when looking at average frame rates, but a huge 34% slower when viewing 1% lows. And this begins to illustrate one of the key problems with ray tracing on Pascal specifically. The experience is extremely inconsistent. This is because there is such a large difference between the capabilities of a card like the Titan X without ray tracing and with ray tracing. So as you move around an environment with varying ray counts, interactions and degrees of ray tracing, the performance of the Titan X fluctuates massively. In areas with little ray tracing, performance is decent, but when you're in an area with lots of shadows, your frame rate can absolutely tank. As you can see in this chart, 1% low performance of 21 FPS is unplayable, and that's just at 1080p. But if you had gone by just the average performance, 47 FPS sounds alright. You know, it sounds decent. The actual experience of playing the game, though, is far from that. Now, of course, you do also get a fluctuating frame rate with RTX GPUs, including the RTX 2060, but the issue is less pronounced. The GPU is simply not as fast in areas without ray tracing, and it can keep up better when ray tracing is enabled. The 1% low frame rate for the RTX 2060 was a touch over 30 FPS, which isn't amazing, but it's an experience that is somewhat okay. Moving to 1440p, and it gets even worse for the Titan X. We're down to a 30 FPS average and just a 14 FPS 1% low, which is completely unplayable. The margins between the RTX 2060 and Titan X are a little narrower here, as the 2060 also struggles at 1440p, but with the Titan clocking in more than 30% slower in the most intensive areas, Pascal simply can't keep up. 
Let's take a look at a more positive game for Pascal, and that's Battlefield 5. Here our recommended setting to use is low reflections. It doesn't have as many effects as the high or ultra modes, but it's a good starting point, and these days the performance hit isn't nearly as bad as it once was. At 1080p we're looking at a reasonably significant drop in performance for the Titan X, coming from well over 120 FPS with ray tracing disabled, down to just 70 FPS on average with ray tracing. However, once again, 1% lows get hammered, halving here from just low ray tracing. Perhaps the most interesting thing is that unlike with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in Battlefield 5 Pascal is more competitive with the RTX 2060. On average it's a little faster and in the most intensive areas it's a little slower. We aren't anywhere near the performance of the RTX 2080, which comes closest to the Titan X when ray tracing is disabled, but due to a fairly light implementation of ray tracing with the low mode, the Titan X isn't as overwhelmed and it performs alright here. In fact, with a 1% low of 46 FPS, the game is playable here. Performance still does fluctuate a lot, but at least it's not dipping to slideshow levels on the regular. So at 1080p with low ray tracing and a card as powerful as a Titan X or 1080 Ti, you could conceivably play the game without tearing your hair out. Would anyone sacrifice over 100 FPS at this resolution for this performance? Well, probably not, but at least it is possible to try it out. At 1440p the situation isn't as promising, with 1% lows closer to 30 FPS for the Titan X, which in a multiplayer shooter is really not acceptable. We're also starting to see a divergence between the Titan X and RTX 2060. On average the Titan is faster, but it's much slower in the most intensive areas of our benchmark run. This makes sense as more rays need to be cast at a higher resolution, and any increase in ray tracing will punish Pascal more than Turing RTX. The final game we're looking at here is Metro Exodus, which uses ray traced global illumination. When I first tested the game I used the benchmark tool, but I've switched to an in-game run here, focusing on the high mode which I feel is the best to use in the game based on my previous exploration. I didn't even bother testing 1440p in this title because at 1080p we're already at an unplayable level with the Titan X. A 30fps average with a 1% low of 23fps is simply not good enough. And in this game there is no ray tracing level below high, so you can basically rule out Pascal entirely if you want to use ray tracing in this title. The Titan X is well behind the RTX 2060 here, more than 30% behind in fact, which again makes sense as global illumination is one of the most intensive ray tracing effects and one where acceleration is very useful. And again, comparing the Titan X to something like the RTX 2080 shows that the RT cores are providing double to triple the performance with this effect enabled. We can expect a similar difference between Pascal and accelerated Turing in games that use multiple ray tracing effects. The more effects are added, the more useful the RT cores become. So what does this investigation tell us overall? Well, the first thing is that I really didn't need to test any slower cards than the Titan X. Two of the three games are already unplayable at 1080p with the Titan, so you can guess how fast a card like a GTX 1070 would be. The only test condition that was remotely usable was Battlefield 5 at 1080p with low ray tracing, but even then I would expect a GTX 1080 to barely hit 30 FPS in the most intensive areas and performance to fall away further from there. So this answers one of the key questions I had going in. No, Pascal really is not fast enough to give gamers a usable ray tracing experience, even if they're just you know investigating or playing around, unless you have one of the top end Pascal cards and the ray traced effects aren't too intensive. As more ray traced games come out, Pascal is only going to fall further behind, so I don't see much of a future for any last generation card when it comes to ray tracing. In the absolute best case scenario, the Titan X matches the RTX 2060 for ray tracing capabilities, but often falls 30% behind or more, especially when looking at crucial 1% low data. The Titan also delivers a less consistent experience which will annoy gamers that hate frame rate fluctuations. Normally the Titan X is at least 25% faster than the RTX 2060 and more up around RTX 2080 territory, but without those RT cores it just can't keep up with Nvidia's latest mid-range GPU. And I guess this brings up the question many people have been asking, which is how much do the RT cores and other bits and bobs in the Turing architecture help accelerate ray tracing compared to Pascal? This is more of just an interest sake type question, but we do now have some rough data that can give some insights. The main comparison would have to be between the Titan X and the RTX 2080, which are reasonably matched outside of ray tracing. The RTX 2080 is faster, but not by all that much. But when ray tracing is factored in, the RTX 2080 is anywhere from 26% faster with low reflections in Battlefield 5, to more than 50% faster in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, to over twice as fast in Metro Exodus. 
Considering TU-104, the GPU used in the RTX 2080, packs in only 13% more transistors than GP-102, which was used for the Titan X and GTX 1080 Ti, I'd say this level of acceleration is actually reasonably impressive and justifies the extra RT cores, at least for these games and effects. Nvidia really couldn't have just brute forced ray tracing through cramming in more CUDA cores. The data does show definitively that ray tracing with RT core acceleration is more efficient. I don't think the level of acceleration acceleration is disappointing either. More than a 2x improvement when ray tracing is heavily used is a decent start from a first gen design and one that only packs in that 13% more transistors. Of course, spending die space on specialized cores for ray tracing doesn't help performance in the vast majority of games that don't support the feature, but I've already talked endlessly about the value proposition of ray tracing in RTX cards, so really don't want to rehash that here. Also, you've already heard us say that we still recommend playing with ray tracing disabled even on RTX cards. That hasn't changed with this investigation, but bashing ray tracing on RTX cards again isn't really the point of this video either. However, after doing all of this testing, I'm sort of left with a question of what is the point? Why has Nvidia bothered testing and enabling ray tracing on Pascal? You know, it doesn't run well even on high-end GPUs, it's unlikely to improve with future games, and it just seems like something people wouldn't use even if it was available. Aside from allowing people like us to test ray tracing on Pascal and show how much acceleration the RT cores provide and other technical insights, for an average consumer, the benefits don't seem to outweigh the cost of Nvidia developing this support. So I have two theories as to why. The first is for developers. Let's say you have a development studio that invested heavily into Pascal and has loads of cards like this very tight next I use for this testing in their dev machines. Rather than forcing developers into upgrading to Turing to develop games with ray tracing, allowing Pascal cards to ray trace, albeit slowly, could improve the adoption of ray tracing in games. Developers don't need 60 or even 30 FPS to test ray tracing in their games, so it could be handy for them. This has a variety of benefits for Nvidia as they you know, are interested in improving adoption to sell more RTX cards. The other theory is basically pure marketing. By enabling Pascal owners to run ray tracing, they're getting a first-hand look at how terrible it runs on their existing GPU, which might you know, incentivize an upgrade to an RTX GPU. In our opinion, ray tracing alone isn't enough to justify an upgrade, but I'm sure this will work for a number of Pascal gamers. I don't think this is a bad move. Having features unlocked for more GPU owners is generally a good thing, and down the line there might be a ray traced game that actually does run well on Pascal. But like most of our videos on ray tracing so far, we're still in the very early stages of the technology and will only become a significant factor in buying decisions in a few generations time. That's it for this one. Time to rest up and edit this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe for more analysis and investigations like this in the future. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to some cool perks. I'll catch you in the next one.